All right, uh, at long last, here we are. All of the original geometry has been replaced with nice clean retop, or at least most of it. There's this little piece down here I, I forgot to build, but it won't take too long. One thing worth mentioning is there was a piece that went across the back here that was originally intended to be, I guess, some kind of a, a structural element for some clothy stuff, but the clothy stuff isn't happening, at least not up there. So I removed it, and I think it looks a little bit better, nice and clean. I also added this piece here. I'm still on the fence about it. I was thinking uh, that this is just looking, maybe maybe these holes here are a little bit too much. Maybe I'll do something else with this shape. You can potentially stick some pipes poking out or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm still kind of thinking about what I want to do for that stuff, but for now I think it's okay. And uh, the other thing is I did end up duplicating the legs. They're all just clones of the of the front legs. If there was some compelling reason to make them unique, certainly that wouldn't have been a big deal. But uh, trying to save a little bit of time where I can. And the other thing is this area here, I'm just tired of looking at it the way it is. So I'm going to just remove some of these channels. So it's got a little bit less of this kind of big clunky repeating stuff. So we'll just go to Z Modeler and Make sure I've got insert mesh or insert edge loop enabled, and I'm just going to hold Alt and click on the geo, and it should let me just kind of roll through here. I want to leave at least one of these edges doing this because there's some curvature that they are describing, but it seems as though I have forgotten to turn on symmetry. So let's just go ahead and we'll do a mirror to flip it to this side because it's only going to do the mirror and weld from the side to the other side. Uh, and then we'll go to mirror and weld. Uh, it seems like there was a little nudge and you can see we've got this piece floating here. which just means something about this was crossing the center line. Let's go ahead and delete that. Take another look at what's going on. So these are all creased still, just giving it kind of a strange uh, look. So let's go ahead and undo that. Tap the X key to enable symmetry. And we may figure some other interesting thing out that we can do with that area. And it could probably conform to this other geometry that it's supposed to be crashing into a little bit better. But whatever. All things that can be polished in time. Like, uh, I, it would be nice if this piece had an analog in the uh, the front thing, kind of like that. That stuff lines up, makes my eyes happy. I was doing a little bit of that stuff down here. Where was it? Like this thing here, kind of lining up. That, that's what I was looking for. Those two things come together. Not necessary, just little, little things you can do that make it feel cohesive and nice. Okay, so now what I want to do yeah, I like that better already, is I'm going to do some experimentation. I want to add, the reason I left these pieces off is because I actually want this to be uh, kind of, I want it to have the, the look as though it is wrapped in cloth. So we'll do some experimentation. First of all, I'm going to duplicate the original one, so it's easy to go back if I want to. And right now I'm still in dynamic sub D, which means if I hit shift D, we can we can see what's actually happening with that geometry. It's it's fairly low poly and certainly way too low to do any sculpting on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply my dynamic subdivisions, which is basically the same thing as just hitting divide a few times according to this right here, right? So I think this should set it to four or five. Let's see what happens. If I hit apply, five, right? Okay. So now this has a much denser poly mesh, which means I can sculpt on it. But you can see it's still fairly faceted. So I'm gonna add one more subdivision. So the, the, um, the brushes that I'm gonna be using here, I found on ArtStation, it's this one here, this compression folds and tension folds. These are probably made using Marvelous Designer or something similar, or perhaps sculpted. I don't know, certainly there are people that can sculpt like this, but it's much easier to do this kind of work using a cloth simulation tool. And that's certainly how I would do it. But again, this is 
I'm trying to, to keep this as ZBrush centric as possible. So once those brushes are downloaded, oh, also they're like five bucks per set. And I think there's a discount if you, if you buy them both. So it's like the amount of time you save, there's not a smarter way to do it in my opinion. Um, certainly learning Marvelous Designer is a good idea and I recommend that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is tap the comma button. which will bring up my all of my uh, brushes here. These are the ones that are not included by default when you start ZBrush. If you put it in the Z startup folder, it's going to end up here, and probably there's plenty of crap in here I can get rid of. Uh, and if it's just in your brush folder, it's going to be here, and you can load it in uh, like I'm about to do. So here's cloth tension, and here's cloth compression. So I'm going to head over there. And for the bottom of this, I'm going to use this brush. And we may need to make some changes. So right now the focal shift is set to negative 100, which means it's going to have a very square vibe to it. And you actually see it probably could use another subdivision. So I'm going to set the focal shift to something a little more reasonable so we get a softer fall off. I think that looks pretty good. Just have to figure out which direction I want it to go. And then I'm going to increase my intensity. So this is a fairly small area. So you really want this to read as well as possible. There's also some some variety, so you can try different alphas. That might be a little bit better. So I'm envisioning it being kind of compressy right here and kind of tensiony right here. And there's another thing that we can do. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I don't want to overcomplicate it. Let's just let's just stick with this plan for now. Use the same one over there. And then I'm going to hop back over to my brush menu and we'll go and look at the tension ones. And I think I'll try this one out. There's a little bit of experimentation that I did prior to the start of this video. So you can begin to get something like this. So I do have symmetry turned on right now, which, you know, in, in the, the real world, you would probably end up duplicating this leg anyway. So it's maybe not that big of a deal, but something to be aware of, like you don't, you get a, like a very obvious roar sharking thing. If you try to have some kind of a center line that has, you know, repeating cloth folds on it, definitely is very, very noticeable. So I'm just using the smooth brush here to relax that little area there. And then there's like one more thing, kind of optional, but we can use lazy mouse, give it a, a bit of radius on it. And I'm just going to add a little crease line or maybe like a little sew line that follows that top form. And then we can make it feel a little bit cleaner with the pinch brush. So you get some so I'm feeling like maybe there's like a structure, a, maybe a metal structure underneath it. And this cloth has been stretched over the top of it so that when it bends, it's got something that's kind of designed to keep that boundary between these, the, these two leg components sealed up. All right, so in the next video, I think we'll try to build something comparable for this area and this area back here. and. Uh, and then after that, we'll start adding some more interesting hard surface detail.